Today we're in the book of Job, and we've left Esther, and now we enter into a very interesting 42 chapters, the book of Job. The book is the first of what are called the poetic books. The, the Bible starts with, obviously, the books of the law, Genesis through Deuteronomy, and then comes the historical books. And, you know, those include Joshua through Esther. And now we have the poetic books, which include Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. After the poetic books, we'll see the Old Testament kind of wrap up by the prophetic books. Hebrew poetry isn't quite like what we're used to calling poems or poetry. We associate rhythm and rhyme with poetry, but that's not the element of Hebrew poetry. It involves multiplying and building thoughts using repetition, contrast, restatement, and all kinds of parallels. We don't know who wrote the book of Job, nor do we know exactly when it was written, or even if these events are true, if they took place. Several authors have been suggested, including Moses, Solomon, Ezra, and Elihu, but we really don't know who wrote it. Many believe Job himself, and it's believed to have been taken place during the time of the patriarchs, before the Exodus, there's no mention of the law or the Levitical priesthood. And Job was a priest over his family. This book is believed by many scholars to be the oldest book in the Bible. And it's a great picture and profound philosophical, theological work that all kinds of people, secular, religious, have claimed that it's one of the greatest books ever written. It gives us insight into the heavenly realm and the role of Satan in a more detailed way than it's found anywhere else in the scripture. And it deals with some of the most, well, troubling questions in life, including, well, why good people suffer and why does God allow tragedies that happen in the lives of his people? And these theological and practical questions are seen here in this book, and it teaches us much about patience and gives us a huge insight in how to comfort and counsel someone who's going through a tough time. And finally, that the book also paints a graphic picture of God as we see him. All his majesty, his power, his sovereignty, his compassion, his faithfulness, and he restores to us in this book through the story of Job, what Satan steals. The book can make for a long reading, 42 chapters, and the tedious things that happen in Job's life and all the suffering, and no one seems to understand. But in the end, God always comes through for us, and he always will. Chapter one, you have Job. It starts off, says, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. He had all these children, he was very wealthy, he was very successful, and Satan comes before God in heaven and says, yeah, the reason he serves you is because you've blessed him so much. You've put a hedge around him, take it away, and he'll curse you to your face. And so God allows Satan to go at him, and, he, and all his children die, he loses all his wealth, all his property, the only one he has left is his wife. And Job enters into this amazing, poetic kind of struggle of why do the righteous suffer? And one thing I'll leave you with in chapter one is that in the midst of this, listen to what Job says. He says, at the very end of chapter one, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this, Job did not sin nor charge God for what happened. Amazing story in chapter one of the book of Job.